Yeah. Good day to everyone. We have a great special guest today, one of the best Israelis MMA fighters. Can you please introduce yourself, talk about your titles, achievements, and so on? Thank you very much. I am. Uh, my name is Ido, the Hebrew Hammer Pariente. I was an MMA fighter from the year 2000 until 2012. Um, I was in the uh, Ultimate Fighter Season 8. I didn't make the house. I lost the first match to the guy who won uh, the whole season. Uh, I fought in uh, K1 Dynamite. I fought for K1 three times. Uh, K1 Dynamite had a match against Jake Shields. Uh, I won the European Jiu-Jitsu Championships in 2007 as a brown belt. Uh, I won a World Championship in uh, Pancration. And those are the, the major ones. Why did you start training MMA in the first place? What fascinated you with this love of martial art? Martial art? Well, MMA is not a martial art. MMA is a style of fighting. It, it, it allows all fighting disciplines join together and make one fight. It's like a fantasy, you know, whatever we saw in uh, Bloodsport with Jean-Claude Van Damme and all those movies who uh, uh, basically made us fantasize about which was the best martial art. And all of a sudden this came to life with UFC 1. I discovered UFC 1 around the year uh, 1995, I think, like two years after it was. Uh, after it was. And I saw it, and it was really like intriguing. Said, Whoa, this this thing cannot be real, and I have to do this thing. So this is what made me chase that. What is your favorite submission? I guess you're a BJJ fighter, right? Well, I am, but I'm a stand-up fighter as well. I like, I really like all aspects of the fight. But my favorite submission, I couldn't tell you what my favorite submission is because. Uh, Submissions is like uh, like your children. You have a lot of children. You like everyone equally. Yeah, I understand you about that. About your first professional fight, how were you feeling? Can you describe it? Just your first professional fight. Man, my first professional fight was in the year. It was um, July two thousand. And July 2000 it was not even called MMA. It was called No Holds Bar. And the only reason why they call it professional is because you got paid. I got paid $100 for that fight. $100. And, you know, I just called up the promoter. I told him, man, I'm a fighter. I want to fight. He told him, yeah, you want to fight? Okay, come on. I have a fighter for you. And he, he gave me, like, the toughest guy. I didn't know. I, I didn't know anything. You know, I was, I was just a guy who was a karate guy and learned jujitsu and, <coughs> and a little bit of judo. And I said, oh, man, I can do this. I saw Hoist Grace and said, I can do this. I can do this. I don't care. And, yeah, it was one of the – he, he, he uh, matched me up with one of the toughest fighters. And to me, I didn't know. I, I, to me, it was obvious that I'm going to win. It was I dreamed about it. I had a, a vision about it, and I, I, it couldn't have gone any other way. So I, I, I submitted him in in less than a minute. I put an armbar on him. He was a wrestler, and I actually ended up taking him down. Everybody was was laughing. All the wrestlers was laughing at him. Man, how can a, a non wrestler take you down? It was uh, quite funny. Oh, awesome. I guess Dylan Norris is the fastest uh, TKO win of your career, right? 25 seconds, if I read well. No, no, I have a 22. 22? Who is that guy? I have a 22. I have a, it was a, my third fight. Yes. I, I, was, I, I was matched up against uh, somebody. Um, well, I was supposed to fight some guy, and then he didn't show up. So they matched me up with another guy who was terrified of me. And the promoters told me, hey, take it easy on him. Try to make it a long fight. Don't submit him too easy. But I was I was too young and too inexperienced. And going into the cage, I was everything was, was uh, you know, the, the, the nerves were kicking in, the adrenaline. And I kicked him in the leg, two punches. He buckled in. I kind of shoved him to the mouth, threw a 
two punches from the mouth and armbar. It was 22 seconds. Awesome. Okay, now I guess the greatest bout of your career is the one versus Jake Shields, right? Nah, no. That was the the, the that was the the bout that um, I could say gave me opportunities. That was the bout that opened some doors for me. Even though it was not a good bout on my part, but the fact that I was willing to take this fight against a guy who was going to be the next big thing um, uh, gave me opportunities uh, in places. So, which is your favorite victory? Let's now analyze your whole career, your favorite victory, the toughest guy. You know what you enjoy the most. Yes, I have a fight against a guy. His name is Chad Hinton. Yes. He was a, Be he, he was a Bellator uh, veteran. It's one of my last fights. And it ended in a split decision, a very, very, very close fight. I remember that I gave everything that I had and a little bit more. And that was the most satisfying win. Standing uh, in the end, waiting for the judges to uh, 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 to call. Then you hear one judge one uh, to me and judge two to him. And then you're waiting for judge three. And the judge number three says it's with me. And I cannot believe it because the, it, it could have gone either way. It was a really a very satisfying moment and it was a really hard fight anybody who saw that fight man I could say oh boy that is that is a high level fight what is your greatest submission win in the world of MMA my greatest submission win yes in MMA man uh, that's a hard one that's a hard one I want to say the first one, yes. the armbar, but the, the story behind that is that he didn't tap. I got him with a straight armbar, yes. and the referee stopped the match, and then he got upset, and he wanted a rematch. So I wouldn't say that was the biggest one. Um, I, have, I have a submission in K1, yes. a knee bar. Yes. A knee bar against, uh, I forgot the name of the guy. He was from Lithuania. He's a, a weird name. Uh, I don't remember. His Is name. it maybe Excuse Mindaugas me. Mirnovas? Yes, Mindaugas Mirnovas. Yeah. Exactly. I know Lithuanian guys. Yeah, okay. That was him. I think that was that was the best because, because the story about that fight is I got hit and opened the cut in the eye. And my coach was yelling, my coach was yelling to me, man, you got to cut. You have to finish the fight in this round. Otherwise, they might stop it. And then uh, we went to the ground, and I started scrambling into a lot of submissions, a plata, an armbar, a triangle. And then in the end, I got the, and he was escaping everything. And then in the end, I got the knee bar, and, and my coach is yelling, Break it, break it, break his leg. And that's a famous line. Everybody here in Israel remembers it. Break his leg, break his leg. It was crazy. It's remember, everybody remembers it until today. Oh, it's awesome. So I guess, uh, how is in your country? I mean, Israel, now Israel is popular in Bellator, but at your time you were probably the only guy who was making big results. And how was it actually? How was it back then, or how is it right now? Uh, both, both. Well, back then, um, I was pushing a lot, so, and I was promoting a lot. I was promoting myself, but I knew that in the end, it it, it was going to help a lot of Israeli fighters uh, come up to some bigger scene, and there and there came a little bit, not too much. It was Noad Lahat. And then Chaim Gozali made his thing, did, did his thing. But back then, when I was fighting, um, I think I had a big, big contribution to uh, promoters that promoted fights in Israel because people wanted to see me. So, so uh, promoters wanted to promote fights and have me on the scene. 
Um, when I finished my last uh, my last uh, bout was actually the the end of the Israeli promotions. There are no Israeli promotions. There is there is some small you know organizations that are doing some fights, but nothing that is building up uh, new talent and nothing that is televised or something like that. No big shows right now. The only thing that's going on right now is Bellator. Um, so right now I'm not fighting anymore. So I am uh, working on making a new promotion. It's called Heroes. Heroes, uh, uh, Heroes MMA. And right now we're just doing uh, amateur fights, trying to grow a little bit, trying to uh, pick up the scene. And as we see, as we're going to see that the, that the scene, the scene is going to, to uh, 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 grow a little bit, then we're going to go to pros. So you're the only Israeli who competed at TUF, right? No. 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 I had a student of mine. There was a student of mine called Lev. Lev Magen. He also competed, I think, season 14 or <coughs> season 15. Yeah. So your moniker is Hebrew Hammer. Why the Hebrew Hammer? Why the Hebrew Hammer? Yes. You know, a nickname is something that is given to you. It's not something that you pick. Because your surrounding must... They, they see something in you and they call you that. Oh, he's that. Oh, he's the, the guy is the pit bull. Oh, this guy is a, or this guy is a sledgehammer or whatever. And when I did my first fight was... I was living in the United States and I was training in a, in a gym that had karate and judo and everything there. And everybody was like a family. And, and they came to the fight and they wanted to make like, a, okay, let's, let's put out like flyers about Ido uh, uh, fighting his first fight. And let's do something funny. We'll call him the Mad Moyle or the Crazy Rabbi or the Hebrew Ham or something like that. And it, it, it was a joke. And then my promoter heard it and he said, Hebrew Hammer, I like that. I'm going to call you the Hebrew Hammer. I didn't want to say, no, no, you're not going to call me the Hebrew Hammer. Said, yeah, I'm going to call you the Hebrew Hammer. And I said, no, you're not going to do it. Yeah, I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to come out and say, Ido, the Hebrew Hammer. And I said, oh, no, and I hated it. And then the second time, and I said, no, come on, you got to stop. And then the third time, I said, you know what? I kind of like that. Awesome. So you're a coach at Parianta Academy now, right? Yes, I'm, uh, I'm the owner and I'm the head coach, and uh, yeah. So how's everything going? Can you talk a bit about Parianta Academy and... Well, um, I had uh, a bunch of uh, um, uh, good, good fighters. Uh, I managed to sign some in Bellator. Um, but... Uh, the thing is that it has a cycle. So sometimes those fighters, they are retired, and now I have to uh, pick up a new generation. And that is exactly what I'm doing. I'm, uh, I'm uh, growing the next generation. They're all teenagers now, the, the next uh, uh, fighters. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the fighters that I had are, were jiu-jitsu fighters. There was a big period of this gym that was very jiu-jitsu oriented and, and going towards there and I had I think I had success big big success with my students in uh, big major tournaments I still have one uh, that is going to the United States now he's gonna do Pan Americans and so uh, and, and world championship he's gonna stay in the United States for about six months and um, right now the focus is on another generation oh it's awesome and I hope it will explode too, as Israeli Israel is exploding in the world of mixed martial arts. And you know, there are so many great Israeli competitors. I mean, I'll be honest, seven years ago, I knew nothing about Israeli guys. I knew about you and I knew about Chaim Gozali. Today I know 20 Israeli guys. So yeah. it's amazing. So it's amazing. Thank you so much for yeah. this. And uh, do you have something more to add to this interview? Or... Um, guys, tune in. This is a good podcast, and I hope you enjoy my interview uh, and enjoy 
many other great fighters from around the world. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, and if anyone ever comes to Israel, make sure to visit me, uh, my academy. My website is www.parientamma.com. You have all the information there. You can leave me a message and come to train. Oh, no problem. Just tell me which, which city is that? Which city? In Ranana. All Ranana. right. All right. I will visit your website. Thank you so much. Thank have you. a great day. Bye-bye.